How's it going, YouTube? I hope you are having a wonderful day today. I am going to teach you today all about is quiet rock good for soundproofing? And I'm laughing a little bit because I just went down this rabbit hole, which I'm sure if you've thought about this, you've gone down this rabbit hole and done a ton of research. And it's not as easy as I thought it would be. I thought I could find a lot of information on quiet rock. I thought I could find some good, you know, scientific documentation. And it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. So in this video, I am going to try to persuade you one way or the other, which option I think is better. I'm going to talk about the pros to quiet rock. I'm going to talk about the cons to quiet rock. And hopefully by the end of this, you will have a better idea of which option is best for you, whether that's buying some of this prefabricated drywall called quiet rock, or just using the traditional two layers of five eighths inch gypsum drywall from any sort of drywall company, nothing special about it. And I also like to put green glue in the middle of that. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the video. But first, I want to say that I do have a free soundproofing course below in the description. If you want to take a deeper dive into soundproofing, if you're searching the internet and like, oh my God, this is overwhelming. I have a logical step-by-step -step, um, guide for you that will help you with learning more about soundproofing. So Without further ado, let's jump into the video. All right, all right. So I am doing this video a little different from some of my other videos. I am just pulling up a ton of <laughs> tabs, which you, if you've researched uh, Quiet Rock, you probably have something that looks similar like this. But I am trying to break this down for you in a logical way. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, STC rating. So I'm jumping over to um, Indo, which is a, a window company, and they have this really cool chart that goes over different STC ratings. So STC is an important concept to understand with soundproofing. And the reason is that it gives us somewhat of a comparison between different products like Quiet Rock versus Green Glue and understanding how much noise reduction there is using that product or assembly. When I say assembly, I'm talking about the way that you build your walls. So when we use Quiet Rock or, or a gypsum board, on a studded wall with two layers of drywall and a one inch air gap and stuff like that, that is considered an assembly. Now, I just wanna go over this so you get a general idea of what STC ratings mean based on regular life, um, which I think this chart does a great job. So like a single pane window in your home, normal speech is clear. This is an STC of 25. If you go down there, Indo is, they have these soundproofing panels, so they claim to get 42 to 45, which makes it like loud speech music mostly blocked except for the bass. When you get to 45, it says that you cannot hear loud speech or anything like that. When we get up to 50 to 65 plus, loud music is barely heard. And down here, they talk about how in a professional commercial soundproofing soundproof studio, you really would want something in the 50 to 65 range. And I agree with that 50 to 65 is generally the STC rating we are shooting for when we're trying to even build a home soundproof studio. So keep that in mind. Another thing that I think is extremely important is that STC ratings with a wall must also include the fact that you have a door in that wall or maybe you have a window in that wall which will then decrease the STC rating of that wall. This is an extremely important concept to understand because when you're looking at all these documentations that we're gonna look at here in a second, they're like, oh, STC of 70, STC of 60, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so soundproof, amazing. But what they're not telling you is that if you have a door, let's say you put in a regular hollow core door into your wall, not thinking about it, suddenly your room has an STC rating now of maybe like 40 or 35, whatever the STC rating of that single door was, your whole room is now compromised. And that's the thing with soundproofing that's really tough is that your room is only as soundproof as the weakest link in your room. So the door is almost always going to be the weakest link. So when you look at a wall, for example, um, that says that it has an STC rating of uh, like 70. So let's take a look real quick at um, this right here. I think this is their 545 panel, which is the most expensive one. And if we roll down here, they save an STC of 80. 
that is ridiculous. Like I have not seen anything with an STC of 80. So if you did two layers of their highest level quiet rock, you would have to have a door that has an STC of 80 to make that wall continuously have that much sound transmission class rating. So that means that if you spend all this money to try to get STC 80 in your walls, you might not necessarily get it in your door and then it's all a big waste of money. Now an STC of 60 over here is still pretty good with just one layer, that's amazing. And you can technically get an STC rating from your door of 60, but you might have to buy a really, really costly door, like a high-end soundproof door. An STC of 54 is much more reasonable to expect from a homemade DIY door, which is what I teach people how to do. Um, an SCC of 49 is still pretty good. You know, it's not the end of the world, but I, I'm always looking for that 54 range, 50 to 60 range. 80 is just completely outrageous. I mean, unless you are spending thousands and thousands of dollars on your doors and windows to get them up to that level, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I wanted to talk about that first because all this STC stuff can be completely uh, taken out of perspective if you're not careful. So let's go through their products. They have way too many products in my opinion. I was like overwhelmed with how many products they have. They have this Quiet Rock 510. This is just their data sheet. So I'm gonna go through each of the data sheets. The Quiet Rock 510, I think I would not recommend because for soundproofing with a studio, this is only a half an inch thick and we want more mass than that. So we're really trying to get something that's 5 eighths inch two layers of five eighths inch drywall. And this is just two layers of half inch drywall. So I think in my opinion, I would stay away from the 510. So for comparison purposes here, I'm just gonna really not look at this stuff. Um, if we look at the 530, which is their sort of average middle of the road product, they have, um, it says that it's five eighths inch um, drywall. So you're gonna have a weight of 2.88 pounds per square foot, which should be roughly the same as two layers of 5 8 inch drywall that you would get um, at your big box home store like Lowe's or Home Depot here in the United States. And it has this middle layer which acts as a damping agent, which is very similar to green glue. So I'm not exactly sure, it says it's like steel or something like that, but essentially that steel plate is allowing probably allowing a little bit of vibration, which is creating something called damping, which you don't need to worry too much about, but it is improving soundproofing. We have two things, we have mass and we have damping, and those two things work together to reduce the amount of sound traveling through your wall. So I think I would recommend Quiet Rock 530 as the optimum choice. If you go to their 545, this is interesting, um, but it seems like it's extremely expensive and we'll look at the cost a little bit later here. The only thing that's fascinating about Quiet Rock 545 is on this chart here, the low bass um, response here, the amount of bass frequencies that this stuff can keep out is, is actually pretty impressive and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, I wanna go back to the 530 and look again. So if we put one, this is, kind of annoying because here's the this is what I recommend is the two layers of drywall with a one inch air gap and they only they did two layers of this stuff which would equate to four layers of drywall which you don't really need so we're kind of looking at this one which is not exactly the type of wall I would build with the staggered studs but you know this gives you an idea of this would probably be around 57 to 60 if you did the air gap in the middle and just one layer on each side. So either way, I think that's gonna be great in terms of soundproofing. There's no doubt in my mind that this will work well. The only thing then is, why would I buy this over the two layers of drywall? And I think the real thing that I think this does is it's just easier because you can buy it already built. So you, don't, you only put one layer of drywall up and it's maybe a little faster to install. Although I think cutting through it um, could be difficult. They do have an easy snap product. I'm not exactly sure why that is better because it doesn't have that inner steel plate or inner viscous layer, um, but the easy snap version could be good as well because it might be easier to cut on site when you're trying to cut your drywall. So ideally it's easier to install and I think the other benefit to Quiet Rock is you can get these like ridiculously high STC ratings that like I said before I think are are actually overkill. It's too much 
soundproofing. You don't need that much because again, your door is going to be weaker by nature. And so you don't really need to have an, a STC of 74 unless you're in this like super professional studio where your doors are also reaching an STC of 74 and your windows for that matter. Um, if you have observation windows or windows to the outside. So let's take a quick look at this graph because this is really interesting to me. Um, this is the only graph I could find on their other products. They don't have any graphs like this. This is comparing, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see it better. This is comparing Quiet Rock 545 to conventional 5 8 inch drywall. So I, I'm assuming this is just one layer of drywall. So it makes sense that this would not be as good. So it, again, this is not really a fair comparison per se, but what we can do is we can look over here at green glue and here's a chart where this is from the green glue company. And you can see that we have frequencies down here. Notice that this is says STC band. This is because the STC rating system only goes from 125 to about 4,000 uh, Hertz, which is sort of the audible spectrum of speech. And the reason for this is that, you know, the STC formula was made for, for regular buildings, not for recording studios. So we deal with frequencies all the way down to 100 and all the way up to 20,000 um, Hertz. So, you know, this is also not the most ideal thing for recording studios. But that said, let's look at, so this is a green glue assembly. So this is two layers of uh, drywall with green glue in them. And we notice that down here around 100 hertz, you're getting about 25 uh, decibels of transmission loss. Whereas when you're up here at these higher frequencies, you know, around 1000 where it's like right in the middle of the human voice, you're getting almost upwards of 60 decibels of transmission loss, which is really good. Now let's go back to our Quiet Rock 545 around 100 hertz. You're kind of hitting around 30 decibels of transmission loss or so. And then around a thousand you're you're well over uh 60 so slightly better for sure you know if you're paying for their 545 panel you're probably going to be doing a little bit better than the green wall but again like you know this is not this is still good they're both good so it's like do you really want to pay that much more so let's let's talk about money a little bit this is a tab from this blog called The Spruce. I think this is more up to date, so I wanted to pull this up. I'm kind of borrowing from some of my own research. Yeah, this was updated on February 5th of 2022. And he says that if we scroll down here, buying Quiet Rock 510, so remember this is the one I'm not really recommending, it's $54 per sheet of half inch thick, whereas half inch thick drywall is selling for about 750 per panel. So that is a huge difference. So the eight foot, four foot by eight foot panel of Quiet Rock is $54 versus 750. That's crazy considering that you would basically be doubling this number to $15 um, to get the same thickness as the Quiet Rock, plus the cost of green glue, which still would be way less than $54. I want to go over here because this is another great article by bettersoundproofing.com, which I'm trying to give these guys a shout out because I'm borrowing some of their research. But I wanted to show you this, that they have some pricing here. Quiet Rock 530 is around $105 to $110 a panel, depending on the size. So if you're doing four by eight foot panels, then you're still going to be paying about $105 uh, for this Quiet Rock 530. They don't even have the cost here of 545. You probably have to call up Quiet Rock and actually get a quote for that since that's their highest level soundproofing. But you can imagine it's probably higher than the 105. So still ridiculously expensive relative to just the cost of drywall. So real quick here, I'm gonna go into Home Depot uh, drywall. Let's see here, good old stuff. This is the, the fun stuff. So we got $15.32 uh, um, if you buy 48 or more, which you probably will be doing for your soundproofing job, you know, potentially it can get down to $13. So still kind of expensive. You know, it's definitely gone up since I last did it, but you're looking at $30 a panel technically plus the green glue if you want to compare that to $105. So let's look at the uh, green glue here. They do talk about, 
Yes, Quiet Rock versus double drywall comparison. So if we look at this, the cost of 5 8 inch regular drywall is around $12.57. We just looked it up. It's around $15. A 5 pail gallon of green glue is about $260, and that'll do 365 square feet, um, or just over 11 4 by 8 sheets, so about $23.60 a double panel. So you're looking at $23 plus our $30, so you're looking at just over about $53, $55 or so versus paying for the same thing, doing $105 if we look back up here for the $530. So you're definitely paying almost double for what I would consider just about the same product. So in my opinion, I don't know if I would spend the money on Quiet Rock. I definitely personally wouldn't. Um, you know, I don't think that this is worth it based on all the research I just showed you guys, considering the STC ratings are higher, but again, you don't necessarily need that high of an STC rating to get the results that you want to be in a, a quiet enough room to record and produce. So that's, I hope that wasn't too crazy. I mean, it was like a lot of weird information here, but I do think going with the Quiet Rock 530 probably makes the most sense, not their high end one. I think the high end one will be overkill unless you're some crazy commercial studio. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Let me know what you're still interested in. And again, if you wanna check out my free soundproofing course, please check that out in the description as well. Until next Monday, I will see you all later, and thanks so much for watching.